Wow, welcome to Constellation. This is really wonderful. I'm so glad to see you all. Thanks for coming. Um, my name is Casey Ginther, and I'm the president of Chicago Composers Consortium, AKA C3, and I'm so happy to welcome you all here tonight for this much delayed, much postponed, many, many times rescheduled event, um, the Chicago premiere performance of nine world premieres by the Chicago Composers Consortium and Bernard Rands, uh, performed by Spectral Quartet here, right here, right now. You've, you're here for the moment, you guys. So thank you so much for coming. <laughs> of the composers whose works are on this program tonight, of course, Bernard is here, and most of the C3 members are here. Unfortunately, two of our members couldn't make it. They both had really good excuses, though. Larry Axelrod is in Portugal, and that's a little bit far of a commute, so sorry, Larry. But Larry, if you are watching at some point or other, hi from Chicago. We miss you, we wish you were here. And Kyung Mi Choi is actually tonight in rehearsal for the world premiere of an opera that uh, she wrote, which will, um, it, it, let's see, the first performance is Friday, two performances Friday and Saturday downtown at the Merle Ruskin Theater, shameless plug, I know. But um, <laughs> if, uh, I think it's, it's actually free and it's at 7.30 and I think you'd all enjoy it. And then one more plug, which is that the last concert of our season, Chicago Composers Consortium, is on the 15th of May um, at Gans Hall, and we are welcoming the Durward Ensemble from Iowa to come and play with us a program of um, new music for a very large ensemble. There's 12 of them. Well, not very large, but large ensemble. So hope you can make that. May 12th, May 15th, sorry, write that down if you're interested in coming. We'd love to see you there. Um, and I have a quick word for um, the funders who made this program possible. I want to thank them all and acknowledge them publicly because we're so very grateful. The Illinois Arts Council, the Alice M. Ditson Fund, the Amphion Foundation, the Copeland Fund for Music, and the BMI Foundation because without each of them uh, this evening and uh, this tour that we're doing to three states, a three-state tour, um, and uh, the whole season, in fact, couldn't have happened. Um, and I'd like to give a special thank you to the Arts Tour Program of the Illinois Arts Council, because in addition to helping to fund this evening's performance, they've also funded our, our uh, travel of this program down to the Southern Illinois region, which is just wonderful. Um, and now I would like you all to join me in extending our deepest gratitude to the man whose generosity in commissioning Bernard's piece has made this evening possible. We like to call him that shining light of a human being, <laughs> John Birbasi. <laughs> And I want to thank Spectral Quartet, um, whose um, incredible musicianship, whose countless, countless rehearsal hours have brought our pieces into the world in really the best way imaginable. It's, it's been a privilege and an honor to work with them, and we've really, really enjoyed that process. Um, and before I bring Spectral out, though, one more person I want to thank, and that's Bernard over there. Um, Bernard, your generosity of spirit, your absolute unrelenting commitment to your craft, and most importantly, your music has brought us all here tonight and made this evening possible and has nourished our creative souls and enriched our lives beyond measure. And for that, we thank you. And now I'd like to introduce to you the members of the Spectral Quartet, Clara Lyon, Mae Feinberg, Doyle Armbrust, and Russ Rowland, Spectral Quartet. We are here tonight for a couple of reasons, to bring you nine brand new pieces and also to belatedly celebrate the 88th birthday of Bernard Rands. Um, so I'd like to start uh, with a poem that I wrote called 88 Things That I Love About Bernard. <laughs> 
I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> um, we've, we've all been waiting so long for this night. Thank you very much for being here with us. Um, to kind of kick off the, the birthday celebration part of this, um, we've, we're very lucky in Spectral to have a very good friend, the artist Tom Bechtel, and we've had a gift made for well, Bernard. on your programs. On the front of your programs, uh, Tom Bechtel, as some of you know, uh, has done the talk of the town uh, for the New Yorker for many years. He's a wonderful cartoonist. Tom, are you here tonight? Yes. There he is. So we thought what better way to um, commemorate Bernard's birthday than by commissioning another artist who, who's a friend of ours uh, to make a tribute to Bernard. And we think he did a beautiful job. And um, you'll, you'll even see here the, on the eyebrow the piece of music. He worked in a snippet of the piece that Bernard wrote for us. So it's a very special piece, and we want to present it to you, Bernard, in admiration. Thanks uh, for, for writing us a beautiful piece of music, which we're all going to hear shortly. So I'll... Yes. I remember when Spectral met Bernard the first time. Uh, we were learning his second string quartet, and uh, he very kindly invited us over uh, to his and Gusty's home um, so that we could uh, play it for him, sort of in process of learning it. And I feel like we, you know, here we go are going to this eminent composer's home and playing a piece, and I feel like we finished playing, and all of us kind of like braced for impact. <laughs> and uh, you've already heard the word generous used tonight. Um, Bernard is an incredibly generous musician. He is here to make music, and that's what that was all about. So with all of his accolades, his unbelievable career, um, he is a guy that writes extraordinary music and is just so giving um, with his artistry. So we're very grateful for that. So why are we here? Um, it's been a few years, so let me try to refresh everybody's memory. Um, we were approached by C3, and if you know about C3, you know they're all about collaboration. And if you know Spectral, you know we're all about collaboration. And so some ideas were bounced around, and then we got to this idea of, what if Bernard wrote a short piece for us, and then eight composers from C3 responded in some way? And that could be completely up to them. Like, what if they take musical material, um, perhaps something about the relationship with Bernard, whatever it might be. And so now we have these nine pieces of music that are all connected, interconnected, in this really lovely way that you're going to hear tonight. Um, you're going to hear this name a couple times tonight. Can we please give a big round of applause for John Beerbussy for, for commissioning this work? We love you so much, John. Thank you. Um, okay, a couple of orders of business before we get to playing. Um, you received a ticket on your way in here. Hang on to that. Um, the wonderful members of our board um, have decided to give you a free drink this evening, um, and we also have a cake, so we hope that you'll hang around with us a little bit after the show to enjoy those. And you've probably also heard that one of our biggest projects ever is coming up here in April at the Adler Planetarium. Uh, April 7th and 8th, uh, Enigma, which is a piece that was written for us by Anna Thorvald's daughter. You're going to see visuals in the Dome Theater at the Adler. It's an extraordinary performance, and I'll just say that you will not see Spectral on this scale after that point, so definitely get your Sifla ticket for either April 7th or 8th. There's two shows each night. So now uh, Claire's going to tell us a little bit about how this evening is going to work. Well, yeah. Actually, you know what? Let's give away a pair of tickets to Enigma. Yeah? Yeah? All right. Great. So grab those, grab those drink tickets slash raffle tickets that you have. And maybe Alyssa can help us out. Oh, you're just going to have to do a dance if you win.
Hey. Tim Edwards. Yay. 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 <laughs> All right, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about how tonight's going to work because it's going to work a little differently. Um, we have nine pieces, as you know, and some of them are, are quite short. And so we felt like we, just, we did not want to bow after each piece and turn it into an, an evening of um, silly walks. <laughs> so we will not be doing that. Uh, we will start with Bernard's new piece. And please give us a you know, rousing applause afterwards. <laughs> And um, beyond that point, we're going to um, share some anecdotes and a little bit about each piece, what to listen for, how they relate to, to Bernard's music, every two pieces. So we're going to kind of uh, put things together. We'll ask composers to stand um, after we play your piece. And then uh, once we get to the end of the program, we're going to play Bernard's piece one more time because I think you're going to hear a lot of interesting ways that the C3 composers have been inspired and pulled, it pulled things out of Bernard's music. And I think you might hear a little bit more of that if we play it twice. Plus, it's a nice tune. <laughs> Um, one other thing, actually, that I want to share with you that I think is super interesting about this program is that none of the composers had heard Bernard's piece before writing their own. Um, so just kind of think about that and internalize it for a moment. Um, all of the composers had received uh, Bernard's score and had to kind of make their way uh, through his music that way. And of course, all of them are familiar with many of his other works. But I think that's very interesting. So we're going to hear all of these pieces together for the first time. Thank you. 
second quartet I don't know six years ago now or something like that and um, it's always so interesting and nice to come back to a composer's work after some time away um, to see what things what what things are new what things remain in terms of their unique voice um, what they bring to their craft uh, and with Bernard as you can tell you know there is an immense vitality um, to his work, it's just bristling all the time. Even in the delicate spots, it's it's yearning, it's moving, it's 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 searching. Um, there's an incredible uh, sensitivity to harmonic sonorities, um, just so specific and, and beautiful. Um, there's a lyricism there that's um, it's uh, it's it's a joy to play as a player. It really lets us emote and express. Uh, and I think all of those qualities you're going to see come through in various ways in the next eight pieces of music you're going to hear. Uh, the composers have taken bits of those different characteristics and more um, that I didn't mention um, and, and have played with them and, and investigated them and, and searched them out. Um, you might remember towards the very end of what we just played, there's that lick that goes up and then the very end, da -da 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 the very, very, the very tail end of that. Um, uh, lick. What's that? Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to do it again. Um, but thanks, Clara. Um, um, that lick has been used to great effect and in, to, to in differing ways, actually, uh, in both of the next two pieces you're going to hear. Um, and I'll turn it over to Maeve, who can tell you more about them. Sure. So um, the next two pieces we're going to play, um, they are really fun to play back to back. We have um, the first is by Kyung Mi Choi, who unfortunately isn't at this concert. Um, but will be joining us at some of our other performances. Um, and then one by Martha Horst, who is here. And um, both these composers have taken, um, among other ideas, this sort of um, fast 30-second note motion and used them in really different contrasting ways. Um, Kyungmi's piece, which you'll hear first, is called Falling Leaves, um, which is a really apt and evocative title. Her piece, um, she uses these um, fast runs in a really skittering kind of way. You'll hear them kind of cascading down. Um, and sort of gathering speed. There's a lot of 
um, sort of momentum and things speeding up and speeding up. Um, and then in Martha's piece, which you'll hear after, um, sort of the same kind of um, really fast frenetic notes are used, but rather than speeding up, they kind of just layer and layer and build on each other. And um, her piece is also very aptly named Rabbit Hole. And so you'll kind of hear us um, with these fragments of 30 second notes, um, introducing them and sort of building on them. They, they become longer and they start to layer um, and really work into a frenzy. Um, so yeah, I think uh, these are really fun to pair together. So you'll hear Falling Leaves by Kyung Mi Choi and then Rabbit Hole by Martha Horst.
Starting to find some connections, yeah. So our next two pieces um, are take different tactics uh, than the first two that we did. Um, the first is by Casey Ginther, who you've heard from a little bit earlier in this program. Um, I wanted to say something about the person too, not just the piece that they wrote. And Casey is one of these friendly faces that has popped up at spectral shows so often through the years and is just one of those delightful people who makes your heart warm after a concert. Um, so it's, it's been a real pleasure to be working with her and all the composers of C3. Um, I like the way that she's approached her piece in that she's really turning the, the gemstone kind of all the way around and looking at a completely different facet of it. Um, I don't want to get too technical with it, but um, you notice that at the beginning of Bernard's piece, there's something um, very energized that happens right at the beginning, right? Ba -da -da -da. Um, and she's really taken that and sort of looked at it from the opposite direction. So maybe that's a little something you can listen for in Casey's piece. 
And then we have one by Tim Edwards. And we got to know all of the composers of C3 um, through our virtual listening party that we call the Floating Lounge. And I realized that Tim was a fellow puzzle nerd and probably game nerd too, I'm gonna guess, right? Yeah, okay, safe bet. Um, I think that's, that's kind of how his, his brain works and that's certainly what he brought um, to the piece that you're going to hear. Um, this one is really, is really something that if you're paying attention, you're gonna notice that material that happens at the beginning um, shows up in, in different ways in the second half of the piece, but also um, he's playing with the idea of symmetry and mirroring, um, which are some of the components that he found in Bernard's piece that he found fascinating. So these are very, two very different approaches, and uh, we, so we have these by Casey Ginther and Timothy Dwight Edwards.
The next two pieces that we're going to play are, no surprise, very different, and also very different from each other. Uh, the first piece that you're going to hear us play now is by Timothy Johnson. And one interesting tidbit about this piece, um, which is beautiful, by the way, is that Tim wrote a um, rather significant program note for us um, about how we should approach this piece and gave us options. Um, there, are, there are three um, correct, valid ways to approach this piece. Um, You've gone with the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Um, something that's special about this piece is that throughout, um, except for maybe 10 measures or so in the entire piece, every measure has a different microtonal inflection. Um, and they are very, very, very precise. And so uh, Tim told us before we got working on this piece that um, the preferred method, option one, would be to absolutely nail all of those microtonal inflections. Um, the second option would be to get pretty close. <laughs> And the third option would be to ignore them entirely. Um, for the purposes of tonight, we will be choosing option two and doing our best um, because they are, they are quite difficult. But it's amazing what Tim has done to give um, some really unique color and flavor to some of the chords that, that you have heard some of the other composers use. You will hear them in a new setting now. Um, we're also gonna play for you uh, Betsy Start's piece, Conclusions. And this piece, um, I almost don't want to say too much about, actually, because um, I just think it's really fun and I think you're gonna really enjoy it. I will say that um, Betsy went in a very different direction than I think anyone else did, and you'll see what I mean when you hear it.
never heard before, and then one that you have heard but very recently before. Um, so the next piece that we're going to play is um, by Lawrence Axelrod, um, also not with us because he is in Portugal, probably doing something better than being cold in Chicago. Um, this piece, um, actually both pieces we're going to play, so this piece and then the next one by Laura Schwendinger, they're both pieces that I think um, do a really amazing job of um, using sort of um, contrasting textures in a really effective way and in very different ways. Um, so in this first, this first one um, by Larry Axelrod, it's called Meditation. And there are a lot of um, parts of this piece that are very sort of melismatic and um, blended. And then you'll hear these sort of um, textural moments pop out. There'll be these little flurries of um, pizzicato gestures that are sort of uh, rhythmically overlapping in, in ways that um, Bernard also uses in his piece, but very different textures. Um, and you'll hear then certain instruments in the group um, playing these very lyrical singing lines, solo lines, with um, this sort of very smeary watercolor kind of sound underneath from the other three. Um, and then in a very different way, but also with these sort of um, high contrasts, Laura's piece, um, We've often said when rehearsing it, it feels like bigger than a string quartet, even though there's only four of us playing. It just has this sort of high drama, this big magnitude. You'll hear um, in the beginning and then later on in the piece comes back these sort of um, pillar chords. These really, uh, we play in unison and they're very um, beautiful sonorities and kind of um, very paced. And then it kind of um, works itself up into these um, big sections where there'll be two people sort of duetting in these big solos and then um, two people sort of creating this like fluttering orchestral texture in the background. Um, so these two pieces, I, I really love um, all the textures that are created. So we will start with Meditation by Larry Axelrod and then um, I'm not going to try to say <laughs> the Italian name of Laura's piece, um, but we'll hear that second. Um, hope you enjoy them. <laughs>
So, we're going to play Bernard's piece for you one more time. We hope that you will hear some things in there that you maybe didn't hear the first time or some new meaning that you found in it by way of hearing the other composer's interpretations and extrapolations uh, on his piece. Before we do so, I want to just say a quick thank you again, first of all, to Mike Reed, Peter Margershak, and Constellation, and the staff, Margaret, uh, everybody here. Thank you so much. Not only have they been a wonderful home to Spectre Quartet over the years, but they saved our bacon this time around because we were meant to do this a few weeks ago somewhere else and we had to reschedule, as you know, and we scrambled and they were awesome about it. And so thank you so much to Constellation. Um, thank you again to the composers of the Con Chicago Composers Consortium. This has been a real treat to work on with you all. Um, you, you all have created a body of work here that's beautiful, um, that's so creative. Um, it's just, it's wonderful to give composers a constraint like this and to see everything they can do with it and how many different um, voices come through. So thank you to the Chicago Composers Consortium. <laughs> and especially to uh, Casey, who has been our partner in organizing all this. Casey, thank you so much for um, everything. <laughs> thank you again to um, the commissioner of Bernard's Peace, uh, John Beerbussy, thank you, John. You've been a wonderful friend also uh, to us and to this project. Reminder, uh, well, first of all, Tim, see us afterwards for your tickets to Enigma. Everybody else, go buy your tickets to Enigma. We want you to have a seat. Uh, we think they're going to sell out, we hope, and we want you there. Uh, so get them soon. Uh, join us. Um, that's going to be a very exciting event. Um, so, and... You know that today is a celebration of Bernard's birthday, which happened a couple weeks ago. Um, it's pie day, you know, March 14th, it's pie day. We don't have pies, we have a cake. <laughs> Thanks to Doyle and his strange, beautiful, creative brain, we have a cake that's designed with a pie on it, you'll see. Uh, join us out, I know, I know, it's weird. Join us out there after the show. We will unveil the cake, um, and um, everybody can, and, and we'll sing. Yes, we will sing to Bernard, whether he likes it or not. Um, and I think that's it. Um, thank you. Yes. Oh. Those of you who know me know that I'm not uh, short of words, but tonight I am. I'm, I'm touched in many ways. First of all, you guys are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I, I feel I've been joined at the hip with, with the quartets almost since its inception. Not only because you played my music, but because you brought a, an array of repertoire, which was always challenging, always engaging, and for me very, very uh, yes, challenging, knowing, even if I didn't know the composers or any of the music, to have to listen to it for the first time and, and recognize the kind of dedication that you bring to your work. Look, Absolute commitment. Those of you who play instruments will know what it means to prepare a piece of music. Those of you who don't are able to recognize the difference between a casual performance and one that's absolutely gripping. And it comes about because of the absolute dedication that you bring to your work. Thank you. Thank you. John, we love you. For those of you who don't know John, you must get to know him. <laughs> a lovely, lovely friend. Uh, a graduate of, uh, of Northwestern Music School. Uh, and his whole life has been a passion for music across the entire spectrum of the repertoire. But more than that, he has a passion for new music. He actually believes that it's necessary for music to change 
and to keep replacing itself and so on. So thank you, John, not just for our friendship, but what you bring to make it possible in your very quiet way. You know, thank you. <laughs> one, one final thing uh, to my <coughs> colleagues and friends from the consortium. Thank you for taking this as seriously as you have. I no doubt that you would. But what's remarkable, and I began to discover this when I was very young, that no one can predict what music will do, given the opportunity. And in the hands of creative musicians, composers, the reason that the tyrants of the world try to stamp out new music or make it difficult to be performed in public. Also with poets, they're the two art forms that they, they're so scared of because it's so unpredictable. It's subversive. It's got, makes them uncomfortable. So thank you all for bringing that element and for you making it so clear that Nobody can dictate what music will be. We can only encourage it to be what it will be. Thank you.